Hi there, friends. This is Leah. I am pretty sure I'm live, but it always has a little bit of a delay. So I'm going to just get this all pulled up on my phone and everything so that we're ready to go. I'm sorry I'm about a minute late. Um, just, you know, life and all that fun stuff. So, but it looks like we are live. So happy to see you guys today. Looks like there's quite a few of you here. Hope you guys are having a good Tuesday so far. I see Heather is here as well. So that's fantastic. Okay, I've got it up on my phone here. And we are good to go. Okay. Hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. All right. Welcome to everyone who's joining us. All right. So um, we're going to get this camera flipped around here pretty quick and get started. But before we do, let's just go over the few things we go over. If you're new here, let us know. We love to welcome you. Once I um, get this camera flipped around, I don't see as much, but my partner in crime, Heather, is um, moderating in the comments. And so she catches most of pretty much everything I miss. But if we both miss it, if it's a question, just ask it again, because we likely didn't see it. I see someone mentioned that they're from Fargo, North Dakota. I lived in Fargo for a couple of years, but I currently am in Minneapolis now. So we are uh, somewhat close to each other. Um, so hi. Um, so if you're new here, hi, welcome. We're so happy that you found us. We hope you enjoy your time and you'll join us here um, through each week when we go live. So, um, of course, a couple of things, we give away a $15 gift card code at the end of every live. Um, so all you have to do is what you're doing now, just, uh, chat in the live chat, um, leave comments, uh, leave questions. You can answer questions, um, lots of fun stuff like that. Now, um, one other thing you can do is there is an arrow with the word share next to it. If you hit that button, Go ahead and share it. You can share it via email with friends. You can share it on your Facebook page. You can share it in a Facebook group if that's allowed, but definitely make sure it's allowed before you do it. And then just come back here and let us know in the live chat that you shared. And uh, that counts as an extra entry to win that $15 gift card code. All right. So then other than that, the only thing that we... Um, ask you to do is while you're here, if you could give this video a thumbs up, it's super helpful, helpful to us. That helps this video's reach right now while it's live, but also um, when it's on replay and makes it a little more visible for people to see. So um, please, we would love for you to do that for us as well. I see Mindy is going to be heading to the Mall of America in a couple of weeks. Uh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> that is madness to me. <laughs> I live really close to the Mall of America, actually. So we don't go very often, obviously, because we live right here. Um, but it's actually not too bad. It hasn't been as bad. We go a little bit here and there, but um, it hasn't been as bad with um, COVID and all of that. But still, it's a lot. It's cool, though. Okay, so friends... I think that's everything we have. So I am not foiling today. So um, my foiling machine officially went kaput. <laughs> uh, so I've had it for since it first came out. I think I have a first I had a first generation foiling machine. So I have a new one on its way to me, but it hasn't arrived yet. Um, so we are not going to foil today, which is good. You know, a little break from foiling. We have gone hard and heavy on the foiling these days. So. Um, but uh, no foiling today. So we're gonna ink blend. We're gonna do some rainbow ink blending. We're gonna do some die cutting. We're gonna do a love theme card, um, kind of just in celebration of the fact that yesterday was Valentine's Day. Doesn't have to be a Valentine's Day card though. I think you can tell somebody you love them any day of the year. Um, Kara, yeah, I would never go to the Mall of America during Christmas, <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> I can't imagine. Um, I bet you it's super crazy. All right, friends. So I see it looks like maybe we have somebody new. So welcome. Um, excited that you're here. So I'm I'm excited for my new foil machine to get here. Um, hi, friends. Thanks for joining me. So uh, I'll be excited for all of my solid foil or my excuse me, all of my hot foil plates and my solid foil plate to work again. So I think that just 
my poor little foil machine was overworked and bit the bullet. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get everything switched around and let's get going today and we'll take a look at what we're doing and we will uh, try to end this ship on time. Okay, give me one second here. And let me get this adjusted because it's a little bright. All right, friends. So today we are going to use the Slimline Heart Builders Heart Builder stencil. It's a three-piece stencil set with uh, different sized hearts. And when you layer them all together, they are this cute layered heart. And um, it is the cutest little thing. So poor Kinnery, Heather and I were so picky about the shape of the heart. And it's literally the most perfect shape. But I think that she was probably ready to throw us out a window um, uh, when we were designing this stencil set because we were just so picky about the shape of the heart. But in the end, it ended up perfect. And this is the same shape that our shaker heart die set is based on as well. And so we are going to ink blend this but we are not going to ink blend slimline. We are going to stick to A2 sized and you'll see how it will work here. Um, anyway. um, but we're, so we're only going to use a portion of the stencil, but I'm going to go ahead and get my cardstock block taped down to my desk. Um, Candy, our next release will be towards the end of February. Hi, Tim. Hi, friends. Thanks for joining us today. Kathy, um, if we, Heather and I just did a series of foiling videos, there was Hot Foiling 101 and there was Solid Hot Foil Plate 101 as well. And those are in our foiling playlist at the very top. So um, if you're needing, wanting some tips on foiling, there is a lot in there. So definitely check that out. Oh, thanks, Margo. I'm glad that you like all of our all of our stencil options. We sure do too. Okay, so I'm gonna see where I think that I will. Okay, so these are slimline size stencils, and they do have the little alignment guides in the corner. However, I am not going to use those today because I um, I'm not using, I am not using a slimline card. So I'm actually going to just align the stencil to the left side of my cardstock. And then uh, I'll, I'll probably just eyeball the hearts. There's probably a better way you can do this, but I think that this will work okay because we're gonna use a little bit of a frame to cover this up anyway. So not too big of a deal. So let me grab a couple of pieces of tape out here. And you're going to get going. All right. So like I mentioned, I'm going to try to make the hearts as even as possible from top to bottom and left to right. But I am going to trim this panel down a little bit anyway. So not a huge deal if it's a little bit skewed on one side. I can just trim a little bit more off that one side. Okay. And let's go ahead and get this guy taped down. Joanne, um, the Gemini machine, you use the Gemini foil press. And if you have the larger one, not the junior, I think there is an extender plate that you need to purchase for it. So hopefully that helps you know which machine you need for your, for your die cut machine. Okay, so we've got our hearts here and I am going to be doing um, some rainbow ink blending. So I gotta make sure I need to count here. So I've got Pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, pink, red. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna use some masking tape because I don't want to blend into the next set of hearts. I'm gonna end up needing two pieces when all is said and done. And this is where ink cubes come in handy, friends, because it's a lot to have, um, oops, wrong way. It is a lot to have, all of these ink pads 
on your desk at one time and they take up a lot of room. So I'm going to use my little mini ink cubes today because I'm really not doing all of that much blending with each color. So um, we are going to, and you know what, I might actually flip this around and kind of move it. Yeah. So they're a little closer to me. Okay, perfect. So we are going to start out with ballet slipper. And friends, there's going to be a lot of ink blending today. So we're going to probably be super chatty <laughs> because there's only so much you can say about ink blending, to be honest, before it gets, starts to get a little bit boring. Um, oh, a balloon just floated past my window. That was strange. It's a little odd, but that's okay. Um, sorry, that was kind of a squirrel moment there. So I'm going to try to be as quick as possible because I don't want to just bore you like crazy with ink blending here. Um, okay, so I know we've got pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, pink. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and get all of the pink done since it shows up twice on my... I mean, you know it wasn't red. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> it was technically white, so we're good. We're good. Um, so we're gonna get all of these colors done at once so then I can just set that ink cube aside. So the stand I'm using is from the ink stand. Um, I, I took advantage of one of her great Black Friday sales. So if you're looking for something like this for your inks, they, she has them for both full-size ink pad sizes and minis. So, um, and if you just Google the ink stand, ink stand um, you will find them. All right, so we're gonna do a quick move down the way here. And let's go ahead and get moving on to Coral Reef, which is the first, you know what, I should actually, this will stick better. If I just clean a little bit of that ink off, my tape will stick better. Hi, Donna, so happy to see you here today. Um, I think, Susie, it's based on a horror movie. <laughs> Mindy, you might have to correct me if I'm wrong on that, but. All right. Moving on to Coral Reef. And then these first two colors are the only ones that I have to ink blend twice. So we'll move on a little bit quicker after these ones. Yes, that's right. Okay, so then let's go ahead and just mask over this guy right here. And do this. So I thought a heart or a card full of hearts would be really fun today, considering yesterday was Valentine's Day. Um, definitely, you can use hearts. I think you can use hearts any time of year. Um, I think you can tell, as I mentioned earlier, I think you can tell someone you love them any time of year as well. So um, I don't think you have to be limited to just Valentine's Day for creating fun love theme cards like this. Okay, Coral Reef is complete. So we've got Peach Fuzz. Apparently I need an ink cube holder that is all of the colors of the rainbow. That would be a really big ink cube holder, however. Uh, Susie, I don't watch scary movies either. I've, I think I just knew that the reference to that one. Um, so I agree with you. I'm kind of a wuss too when it comes to stuff like that. So, but that one, I feel like I just knew for some reason. <laughs> All right, on to Peach Fuzz. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you for saying that, Candy. I think that. Was who said that? Yes. So someone is saying that she had a friend check FedEx to see if they had hammer mill cardstock. You'll have to let us know if they do. I know it's a little hard to come by right now. Um, I haven't looked recently because I have technically about two pallets of it. Well, not pallets, two boxes of it. So I am good to go on hammer mill cardstock. But I do know that it has been a little bit harder to come by. These days, that is the cardstock I happen to be using, of course. That's kind of my go-to for everything these days. Of 
All right. So peach fuzz is done. And this will be the, oops, nope. Nope, that's right. Will be the end of our first stencil here. Uh, Lisa, I agree. Coral reef is my very favorite color in our palette of inks. Of course it's coral reef, but I'm not only using coral reef. So that's important to point out friends. I am using lots of colors today. Okay, so up next is Lemon Whip. So as you can see, for the most part, I actually, I am 100% using all of our lightest shades for this first layer of stencils. Susie, I'm sure we can probably accommodate that in the future. Susie would like to see citrus blooms being used again. Um, for our lives, so I'm sure we can accommodate that. It is a great set. I love that set. I think it turned out so magical. And it's one of our biggest stencil sets. I think it has seven stencils in it. All right, two more rainbow rows here. Thank you. I'm so glad you guys are loving the pastels. Now, it's just these initial ones that are pastel. We're going to start adding, as we add the layers, uh, the next set of layers onto uh, stencil, the next set of layers, we're going to get a little deeper. So, but this initial piece was definitely meant to be a little bit lighter. So this is fresh pear that I'm using, one of our lighter greens. Oh, yay for Carol got all of the ink cubes recently. That's fantastic. They're super fun. Um, this was just easier for me today to pull out because I was using so many colors. I thought, you know, let's not have, you know, 20, probably not that many, but close to 20 plus huge ink pads on my desk. I don't have that much space. So it would have been a huge mess. So I thought, let's go with ink cubes. I don't use them super often. Uh, and just show that they can absolutely be used for everything like this. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. Okay. The final color here is Ocean Breeze. And thank you for answering that, Heather, because I think I missed it. Uh, but I will just mention that again, yes, that we use the 100 pound hammer mill, um, smooth white cardstock. Most of the time, that's what most of us use um, here at Pink Fresh. And it is the one that has the chameleon on the cover. They have recently changed their packaging up a little bit, um, but as long as it has that chameleon on it, you uh, should be good to go. Um, Vicki, I am just using a little bit of post-it tape today for masking off my hearts. Um, it's super low tack, so it doesn't stick to the paper um, as I'm running over it. And um, I can just, I just get it in like a few, you know, multi packs on Amazon and it's fairly inexpensive. And um, I don't run the risk of it accidentally over sticking. Now I will probably use quite a few, you know, probably new pieces for each stencil because as they, stick to ink, they get a little less sticky. So um, I will probably break out new pieces for each, each stencil layer. But here is stencil number one, our first little set of rainbow hearts. I mean, this is fun as is. Like I actually love just the single stencil. But we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do all of the stencils just so you can see them. And this one I'm gonna have to eyeball a little bit because I'm, I did not use alignment guides for this because I'm adapting this slimline stencil down to A2 sized, but it's pretty easy to do. Friends, you just kind of kind of get, get your head over top of it and um, just verify. And if I get a little bit, my face gets in here a little bit, I'm sorry. Uh, just verify that it's a center. If it's not perfectly centered, like that's not a huge deal to me. Um, but as long as it's close enough, I think that it'll be good to go. So I'm going to start adding in 
my colors here and I'll put my little two off to the side. So for the next one, for the most part, I believe I am sticking with the second layer or the second shade of colors in um, our color families. I think it's the next one, the next, so the third stencil, the smallest layer is the one where I kind of go back and forth. So up first, we have Sparkling Rose. And I did just use this brush, so I'm gonna make sure I got excess out um, of any other pink that I might've been using. And we should be good to go. Oh, I'm glad you guys like post-it tape. I love post-it tape too. It's one of my, I think it's one of my go-tos for the most part, post-it tape. And then I just have, y'all, I have rolls upon rolls of washi tape. And so that, uh, rather than just continually buying tapes, um, cause I don't really use other than our washi tape, which you can die cut. <laughs> uh, I don't really use this type of washi tape. So I, I figure rather than continuing to just buy tape, um, why don't I, I just am using up all of those like hundreds of rolls of washi tape that I have stashed here and there to hold things down like my stencils and, and dyes and stuff. And cause that's the frugal part of me. If you guys don't know much about me as a crafter, I don't mind spending money on a crafting at all. I love, um, supporting companies and stuff, but if I don't have to buy it, I won't. <laughs> and so I have decided that I'm going to take full advantage of having you know all of those random rolls of washi tape um, and and use them so they don't just sit there and go to waste because after a while friends washi tape does start to get less sticky and it does start to go bad washi tape does have a little bit of an expiration date now lower quality washi tape uh, doesn't last as long washi tape like ours does last for a good bit of time um, but after a while the, the adhesive just gets a little wonky. <laughs> yeah, so Heather, I didn't even actually list all of the colors in my supply list either. I actually just linked up the um, the ink cube bundle because I mean, I'm truly using so many of the colors. Um, so if you are really specifically looking for each individual color, I would suggest um, maybe just going to like our actual ink link on our site, uh, our ink section and just finding them all. Cause I did only link to the main, um, the main ink cube bundle. Um, San, sand P. Um, hopefully I am saying that right. Um, I've noticed pixie spray doesn't really come off either. You could always try to use some hand sanitizer, which is a little goopier and see if that will take it off. I tend to just actually leave pixie spray on the stencil and then I can just use that again and again. Um, and, uh, so I don't worry too much about it. So, um, but I don't know that I've ever fully gotten pixie spray off of my stencils either. And that's why we don't really suggest pixie spray for many of our stencils, to be honest. I think the main one we suggest using it on is that skinny plaid stencil that Heather used last week, just because the plaid, the plaid stripes are so skinny, they can move on you. But like, but for the most part, we suggest taping down stencils, our stencils anyway, the layering ones. Um, so yeah, I really only use pixie spray if I absolutely have to. And so it would be on stencils like the skinny plaid. Um, someone said Dawn dish soap, it looks like. So uh, definitely try that out too. I haven't tried that yet. So I, oopsies, I got this a little off. So let's get that back in place. There we go. Um, Kim, I just store my stencils in their original packaging and I store them by name. Um, it's not real original, but I just, because I keep everything, you know, I mainly use pink fresh supplies one. So there's that. Um, and so I just have everything stored by product grouping and then by name. 
So if it's like a, if all of my standalone stencils are together and I just keep them in their original packaging um, and I just do them alphabetically and then same for like product suites. I just, I put everything together and I keep it in its original packaging and I just store it in these cute little, um, I just have these clear bins that I keep in my craft area. So I know that I am probably not a lot of help on the whole storage thing because I tend to just use what they come with and uh, just go from there. Okay, so let's move on to our next set of hearts. And I, I'm doing a little better today at catching comments because I'm just ink blending. I'm not like foiling and I don't have to concentrate as much. Um, so that's kind of, it's fun. A little, it's fun to hear in there to be able to be better about being able to chat with you guys while I'm creating here. So we're onto oranges and I'm using apricot for the second layer. Uh, Joanne, my, my blending brushes, apart from the couple that you see that I'll grab that have black handles are all from tailored expressions. Um, they have the really great colored handles. They have a set of uh, standard rainbow color and then like pastel rainbow color. So those are the brushes I use. The couple that you saw I grabbed that were black, those are Picket Fence Studio Life Changing. And those are just ones that where I didn't have a matching handle um, in the tailored expressions versions. I just grabbed some of those life-changing ones that I had on hand and turned them into um, that shade of color. So hopefully that helps. All right, moving right along here. We are on to uh, yellow. Okay. Here I get these all marked off here. I'm gonna flip this guy around because we're starting to get a few too many colors on there. All right, so up next is Sunshine. Thank you, Susie, I appreciate that. Hello, Wendy from Seattle. Thanks for joining us today. All right, yellows are always the ones that have so much pigment to them. So I'm gonna be smart about dabbing off a bit of ink so I don't get the yellow too bold. Oh, agree. I agree, Pam. I do like the life-changing brushes as well. I think I had those initially. I actually have a couple of full sets of those and that's why you see them um, intertwined in my colored ones here. Um, and then I have a full set that I use for uh, inks that I don't really ever use anymore. Um, but I liked having, I do really enjoy having the colored handles though for, uh, cause we ink blend so much. Um, oopsies. <laughs> right, let's get that put back on. You may need to get a couple more pieces of tape here, I think. But I think I got that right back in alignment. So we're good. Um, I do enjoy having, lost my train of thought there, sorry. I do enjoy having the colored handles to help with um, having a color for each color family. I do enjoy that. Oh, Donna, it's gonna be a little while before um, our new ink colors are ready. We're still in just like the testing phase right now. And we're waiting on our, we're just waiting on some first set of samples and such. So um, they are not on the way quite yet, <laughs> but they're, they're in the works. We'll go with in the works on that. All right, this is Grassy Knoll, one of our great shades of green. Hi, Yaz. I didn't see you pop on, so I'm, if you've been here for a while, I apologize. I'm just saying hi now. Okay, one last color on this stencil, and then we are on to the final stencil, and then getting this fun card put together. All right, I still see a little bit of green ink there. All right, so this final layer is going to be in aquamarine. Okay. All 
Thank you, Joanne. I appreciate that. So happy to hear you love our inks and our paper collections too. Yes, our papers are fantastic. Super high quality, so fun. The designs are so fun. So thank you for that. You're welcome, Donna. Okay. All right, so there is stencil number two. Let's get these all taken off. Do a quick wipe off of that. And let's take a reveal at the second layer. How fun and colorful is that, friends? I love it. Okay, so later on when the show is over, um, I will clean my stencils more thoroughly. Uh, right now I'm just using a dry lint-free cloth to um, clean them for now. But when the show is over, I will clean them with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I just keep it in a bottle on my desk. And um, that will get all any excess ink residue off. Um, and then it dries automatically too. So then you can use your stencils right away or you can put them away. Um, so that's our, our preference for um, cleaning our stencils, but you can certainly also take them to the sink and wash them that way. Thanks guys, I'm glad you're loving this so far. I am too. Hopefully I'm not boring you too much with just a bunch of ink blending here. Okay, final layer. We're gonna get some new paper strips because those last ones are pretty inky. Never fear friends, I did not throw those paper strips away. I will use them because <laughs> like I mentioned, I'm frugal. I will use them to hold down dies. <laughs> um, oops, that piece is a little too small. Um, before they go into the garbage. All right. So let's go ahead and put our final set of colors out. Now this is a mixture of some of our deepest shades and then some of our third shades. So it just depends on what my preference was on that. Um, I don't know how to say it. Ot Viet. I'm, I probably totally said that wrong, but this is one of my favorite stencil sets that we have too. I love heart. I love the hearts. I think they're so cute. Um, so it's definitely a fun one to have. All right. So as I mentioned, guys, because I'm using a slimline stencil for A2, I didn't use any of the alignment guides or anything to um, align these. I just, I just eyeballed them and made sure the hearts were in the center. Really easy to do that. So um, never fear if you wanted to use this stencil for other than slimline cards, you certainly can. It's really easy to line them up. And so for this last layer, these hearts are smaller, so I'm making them a bit deeper in color. And I'm starting out with Raspberry Bliss, which is our darkest of pinks. I should mention that my little Cocker Spaniel has been a little barky today and a little demanding. I, th I think her tummy might not be feeling very good. So, and she did just wake back up from a nap. So she may demand to be let outside here. So if I have to step away for a minute, that is why if she uh, yells at me <laughs> and tells me she needs my attention. And then, oh, let's go and get these pinks done first down here. Ooh, so excited to hear. Yep, there it is. So excited to hear about some of you are signing up for the next event that's in May. Registration ended on Sunday. So uh, excited to have you here. Okay, friends, I will be right back. Let me go let my little cocker out, okay? Okay, I am back. I'll probably have to leave again in just a minute because she'll want to come back in. <laughs> um, but yes, you're right. Dogs are the boss around here. So uh, both of them have a little bit of an upset tummy. So I think that something they must have eaten. We did get them recently new food and I think we gave them a little bit of chicken last night. 
we're fine. We ate the chicken. So it's not that it was bad chicken, but I think it maybe just upset their tummies a little bit. <laughs> they will be perfectly fine. But it makes, especially her, a little more demanding. <laughs> and she's pretty demanding to begin with. Oh my goodness. The closed caption said cockroach. That's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Apparently did not hear me say cocker. Hopefully we'll, we'll see if it says it again. All right. So let's move on here to the reds. Oh, it looks like for some of you, it's your very first virtual event ever. ever. That is super exciting. We're so happy that you took a chance on us and uh, are com coming to our event. Ooh, not, not orange. We're not at orange yet, friends. We're on candy apple. <laughs> okay, let's get these last little hearts all done. Hi, Barb. So glad to have you joining us. No worries about being late. Of course, this will be available for replay. Not too long after I hit the end button on the live stream. We're just happy that you had time to join us now. I am ink blending hearts in rainbow order. So really all anyone has watched me do today is ink blend so far. So we've just been having a good conversation while I do this rainbow ink blending together. Oh, awesome. So love to, love to hear everybody sign up for our event. We're super excited to uh, do that with you guys. We think it's going to be a blast. The first one was a blast and it was our first time doing it. And so I feel like um, we will have worked all the kinks out, all, you know, all that stuff. And I think it's just going to be wonderful. All right. Just a couple more colors left here, friends. And then we can get this card put together. I knew that the rainbow ink blending was going to take a bit of time. So I did pre-do a lot of like the die cutting and such, because I was thinking that even though this is simple, that it was going to be a little painstaking just because, um, you know, I knew I needed to mask every layer and my little princess is asking to be let back in. So I will be right back friends. All right, I'm back. Now, hopefully now that she's awake, she doesn't go to the front room and just incessantly bark out the window, but we'll see. That's, that's kind of been what her MO has been today. So we shall see how this goes, friends. Laura, so there is a hot foil plate in the event. However, we are using it for a dry embossing technique, not foiling. Um, for class class and Heather and I are going to just do a little bonus and mini class on foiling for the event, but that is, of course, completely um, uh, uh, You don't have to do it. And in class class, we would be using the hot foil plate with a dry embossing technique. So just an FYI for any future events that you may be interested in. And if you see a hot foil plate in there, we will always use it in a way that doesn't require hot foiling. Oh, Lean, that's fantastic. I'm happy to hear you'll be joining us for the event. Um, Candy, yes, Laura Baston is teaching um, the Crop and Create class. Okay. Two rows left, friends, and we are done ink blending. We can get this, the big reveal of this rainbow um, rainbow hearts. 
All right, so this is key lime that I'm using for this green. Okay, and then finally, one little final set of flowers here, or flowers, hearts. <laughs> we typically are doing flowers, aren't we? Okay. And this is Mermaid Cove. So one thing about the event, Donna, is um, you even if you can't attend, um, and this would be for future events because registration is currently closed now, um, it's always available for replay. So as long as you're on Facebook, because that is where the events take place, you don't have to be there for class, live class. Of course, there's always fun to be a part of live class when you can, but if you absolutely cannot, it will be available in that private Facebook group. Um, and we will keep that open for at least six months, um, you know, if not longer, but we've, we, we say six months at least. Okay. Well, there is our fun rainbow heart background, friends. Let's get this, ooh, I'm kind of tearing up my paper, but that's okay, it's on the back. All right, so. There is my rainbow ink. Uh, Beth is asking me if I use a separate brush for each, each ink pad or use the same one for color groups. So I let me show you here real quick. I can pull them out because I think we have time. So I can get, just give you a quick overview of how I use blending brushes. So I have one for more pastel colors. So typically, the ones that I use on these two rows, I use with our lightest shades in the color family. And then these ones I use with the darker three shades. Um, and I just, if I'm using them, I'll just rub them off on like a microfiber cloth um, like this to get any excess ink. And then that makes it so I don't have to clean them super often. I do clean them every once in a while once they feel like they're super heavy with ink and maybe aren't blending as well. So that is that is how I do my, um, my ink blending tools. So I have a pastel set and then I have just a normal set. All right, so let's go ahead and put these stencils away. I will clean them off a little bit later. Um, so I need to trim this guy down. Sorry, I know that was a little loud. I did not need to do that. And I think I maybe forgot to create card base. So I need to do that really quickly. I sure did. So give me one second while I create a card base really quick. Um, let me see, I missed, I saw a comment and now I can't see where, oh, Debbie. The brush stand. Um, those are from an Etsy shop called, I think it's called Make It by Marco. And they're 3D printed. They come in different colors. I just picked white because white matches my craft area better. Okay. So let's get a card base created here. Stephanie, I'm glad that helped. Oh, you're welcome, Beth. Pam, um, all of our colors, with the exception of detail black, are dye inks. Our detail black is hybrid, which makes it, and I think Heather just answered that, so I'm just saying that. Our detail brink is hybrid, which makes it alcohol marker and watercolor friendly once it's dry. Keep that in mind, you do have to let it dry. Um, but yes, all of, the, all of the rest of our inks are premium dye inks. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim down my little heart panel here because I want it to fit within an A2 sized card base here. And you will notice that some of the hearts don't won't fit all the way to the edge. And don't worry about that at all because we are going to, um, it's not gonna matter is basically what I'm trying to say. Let's trim that down. Let's trim this guy. Looks like Cheryl is waiting for a package to arrive. That's always the worst. And then let's take an inch off the top. Ooh, maybe did that too much, but that's okay. <laughs> Crafting live and you make mistakes, but I think I could still make it work. Mostly. Okay. All right, and this doesn't look like much yet, but it's gonna be really great once we start building it up with all of the different pieces that I have. So I have cut out the stitched scallop rectangles from my favorite gold paper. And I'm just trying to decide, I do think I need to use both of them. I sure do. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am gonna add a little bit of foam tape to the back. And this guy, maybe if I can find, there it is. Maybe if I can find my foam tape here. So we're gonna add foam tape to the back of the outer window here. And I just keep the little pieces and I save them for later. guys. Okay, so let's go ahead, get foam tape on here. Okay. All right, one more piece. Um, Mary, I just used the same 100 pound hammer mill white cardstock um, so that it matches the white that I um, have used previously. So I'm going to do that. And I think I will leave this one down normally like that. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to make a full panel of foam tape of the heart piece because I want to give this card a bit of dimension here. So let's go ahead and get that made really quickly. Yeah, Stephanie, these are one of my favorite, one of my favorite ed edges, excuse me, edges that we have in our essentials collection. I just think it's a, such a pretty um, design and it seems it's different than what's out there. And I love that you get the nest, the two nested shapes um, within each other, you know, and we do that with almost every version of this, um, where you get that nice um, inverted, the stitched edge on each side and the inverted scallops on the inside. Uh, yeah, this would actually make a really fun shaker card. I'm not going to turn it into one today, but definitely would be very fun. <laughs> Yay for dimension. I do, whoa, sorry. She's just being a little bit ornery today. Um, I do a little bit of both. I buy some envelopes, I make some, just depends on the size and the amount of time I have. Okay, I'm gonna let her go outside again one more time. So bear with me while I go run back over there and let her out. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, 
Um, Joanne Hammer, this Hammer Mill paper is actually really good for foiling. I believe Laura Basson actually learned that from us, to be honest. Um, and it is, it's kind of the reason why we all switch to the Hammer Mill because it's really great for ink blending. Um, it's really great for foiling and it's affordable, to be honest, when you can find it. Now they are having all paper companies are having a little bit of issues with supply chain. So it's not just hammer mill. So keep that in mind. If it's a little bit harder to come by right now, hopefully as things, you know, continue to get better with supply chain issues, it'll be a little bit easier to find, but um, so, but yes, it is perfect for all of those things. And then I am not gonna pop the inner scallop frame up with any foam, I'm just gonna glue it down. So then I get that nice little bit of um, up and down you know, dimension there. Okay. So I am trying to land the ship on time because I know Heather has to leave um, fairly quickly. In the end, I ended up covering up all of the pink hearts at the top, but that's okay. So hopefully I will get as close to the time as the hours I can, but even if I go a little bit over, Heather will announce the winner and then I will end the show um, by myself. Okay, so then we have one more little section that I wanted to do here. So I have the Adore Alphas and I pre-cut some, but I also did some strips, just some eighth inch, strips of cardstock on some white cardstock here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the X and the O out from it again. First things first, I'm gonna get them measured here so that I am using as much as I can. So I'm just using my glass mat to make sure that they end up relatively in the same space. And then I'm going to cut them out from this fun rainbow paper here. So I'm going to get a couple, if you remember, I have all of those leftover pieces of tape. I will use those to make sure these stay down so they don't shift on me when I run them through my machine here. <laughs> exactly. Who needs pattern paper when you have dyes and cardstock? <laughs> <laughs> and inks and stencils and all that fun stuff. Uh, I should actually mention that the Adore Alphas are on sale. Did this cut all the way through? Need to make sure. Yeah, sure it did. Okay. The Adore Alphas are actually on sale this week. So if they are something you have wanted to add to your collection, both the stamps and dies are on sale. Um, as and then the Kelly Alpha, which is another set. I see a couple of areas where I must have needed to add a little shim. That's okay. I can cut. This was a lot of paper to cut through, friends. So, um, and I have long believed I have a little bit of pressure issues with my Gemini. So, I probably should have added a shim with this. Heather probably would not need to add a shim. To be honest, that tends to be my machine so but i'm going to cut these again and i'm probably going to add another little paper shim in there however i don't need the outline pieces i just need the inners so give me a second here while i get these apart and i'm going to use a shim this next time All right, so there we go. Let me cut that one more time because I need two of them. Try to get, I think my husband's probably home because Sadie is barking her little head off in the breezeway. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab our shim real quick. 
I'm just going to place that in here and hope that will help it cut a little better. All right, congratulations to Pam for winning today's gift card code. Pam McClung. Um, all you have to do to um, claim your prize is email me, Leah at pinkfarstudio.com. Um, and then just give me two to three days to reply. And my husband is home and my Cocker Spaniel is a little wild today. So um, just bear with me while she gets calmed down. <laughs> All right, yes, that little shim helped me, helped that cut a lot better. So I'm glad that that turned out much better this time around. All right. So there are my letters. Okay. And I realized I only cut one layer of, hmm, that was dumb. I don't know why I did that. Well, I'll use this later. And let's go ahead and actually just pop these up with a little bit of foam tape. Okay. Kelly's dogs had to go outside when mine did. Yeah, she's a little wild today. Uh, I guess that's what I get when she doesn't feel very good. Okay. And I might be a little, a couple minutes over on this friends. I was gonna try to get it all in there, but you know me, I'm a little bit slower crafter than Heather is. But even when I'm doing less, it takes me longer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've got my little XOs. XO, XO. And you'll notice that I cut out a set from gold as well. And I, all I want these for, I'll use the, the inner gold ones at a later date, but all I want are the, uh, outer pieces. And I just realized I totally forgot to cut two sets. Like, I guess my brain only had one set going here. So let me get those cut out real quick. That was totally my lack of prep work here. And we'll just get these cut really quickly. I've got a couple pieces of small, small chunks of gold paper here. I think somebody might have asked earlier what the gold paper is from. And I um, I think I missed answering. I think it slipped my mind as I was working on all of these other elements here. This is tonic gold pearl paper. So if you just search tonic gold pearl, it should come up. Oh, thanks, friends. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right. So this time, let's see. I have all of the elements that I need. Because you know, Leah, you were doing two XOs, not just one. But hey, now I'll have another set of gold XOs for a different project which is super fun. Okay, go ahead and get these all tossed away real quick. Okay, so I wanted to show how fun these look. On a card like that. And you may think that right now they don't pop off very well and, but they will very soon. Once um, I make sure I put the little um, pieces around them. Thanks guys. All right, let's get the backing 
off. So it would have been so much easier if I would have remembered to make two sets of my um, the, um, stacked letters, but that's okay. We'll just make this work. So you want to space them out enough because you're going to be adding another little layer with that outer outline to them. So you don't want to do them too close or you will end up overlapping the gold piece, this gold layer like that. So then I'm just going to grab a little sheet of scrap paper here and we're going to just use a glue pen get it going. It's been a while and it's been very cold. So hopefully this will work. Uh, you know what? I'll just go ahead and use this glue. I'll just have to be a little cautious with it. We'll just do some dots here and there. Thanks guys. All right. And then I'm just gonna stick it in here. This is a little fussy, but once it's in, it'll be great. And then you have this great gold outline piece here. Pop, pop that in, oopsies, around the edge. And quick tip, what would actually be easier is what I was original do, originally going to do which was I had these stacked letters and they were gonna glue down directly onto the cardstock. And they these just glue around those a little bit easier that way. So if I were making this card again, I would re have remembered to create another set of stacked letters because then these just go right around the edge and they stay in place so much better. So just a tip for you, if you want to recreate this card, do it that way. Don't do it this way. I'm doing it the hard way right now. So, which is, of course, is taking more time. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are here for me, though, and you're, you're okay with me going a bit over today. So I appreciate that. And then... If you're noticed, these letters pop off that heart background so much easier. All right, let's go ahead and do this with the stacked layers here. Thanks, friends. Sherry, this is the Adore Alpha said and I did mention before uh, but just in case you're just arriving here that these are actually on sale right now for 25% off so you can get all of that info in multiple places but you can get it on the first slide on our website um, it's on our Facebook page it's on our Instagram saved in our highlights on Instagram so lots of few places you can find that info out and let's go ahead and do the one more set here. Right. And we want to make sure that we get this on the right side. Okay. Use my little pokey tool here to get it down in there. Like I said, this would be a thousand times easier, easier with stacked letters. So keep that in mind if you guys want to do this again. I did this the hard way because I forgot to do a second set of those stacked layers. Yes, alpha die sets are great. We have quite a few really great ones. Um, and they all, except for the Kelly Alpha, also have coordinating stamp sets as well. So really a whole lot of options going on in the different alphas we option alpha options we have 
However, the only ones that are on sale this week are the Adore Alpha and the Kelly Alpha. So if you're looking to add to your um, Alpha set, it's a great week to get those. Uh, Sharon, these are about an inch and a quarter, maybe a little bit more with the outline. Okay, we are almost done here. All right, while I'm gluing this in, I'm gonna ask you guys your preference since I'm so far over time. Um, I was planning on stamping a little secondary sentiment and adding it into the middle. Um, do you guys want me to do that now or would you like me to do it afterwards? And you can show me, um, or, or I can do it afterwards and I can just take the photo so you can see them when I post to Instagram later. Totally up to you guys. I can end this ship now and just complete the card in a moment. Um, or we can keep going for a couple more minutes. Okay, so we'll just keep going for a couple more minutes. Um, I wanted to add just a cute little secondary sentiment into uh, in between, that's why I kept these so far apart from each other. Um, I love the, I love you most of all um, in this Simply Sentiments You set. So we are going to stamp and I think I'm gonna stamp and heat emboss that. So you guys have given me the permission to keep going. So I'm gonna can just continue to go over time a little bit here and really get this card finished. All right, so I think I'm going to grab a little scrap of pink cardstock that I have on hand here. I think that's the same color as that dark pink, it sure is just need to trim it down to size so it'll fit in my little mini misty here okay <laughs> great pam that's perfect okay so let's get this in here have this here okay so we have this so i'm going to try out a little thing that I heard someone say they really enjoyed or, or they liked their embossing better doing it this way. So I'm going to try it. I haven't tried it yet. So here's hoping that it works out, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prep this with a powder tool. And rather than use embossing ink with my white embossing powder, I'm going to actually use white pigment ink. And I have heard from multiple people that they like that they get a little bit more uh, of a brighter white, I guess, when they combine, when they try it, when they heat emboss with their white pigment ink. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to see what I think. Um, hopefully I like it. I'm going to stamp this a few times here. We'll clean that off in just a minute. Let's go ahead and it's actually kind of cool. I like that. Ooh, do not pour that on your desk, Leah. All righty. All right, and it might get loud for a second here. I think I actually really do like that. I think that it keeps that white a little bit more opaque. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get this guy trimmed down to strip. Okay. I am just gonna trim off the edges here. Okay. Um, Beth, I, you know, because it does take a little bit of time to dry, I think that you certainly could use the detail black ink for um, heat embossing. So you could stamp in detail black and then cover it with clear embossing powder and heat set it and it would just make that nice and shiny. Um, and I think that that would be, uh, I, I don't use black embossing powder because it makes a mess. Um, and half the time it, um, it doesn't, you know, it kind of sticks in places it's not supposed to. So that could actually be a really great remedy if you wanted to have a black heat embossed sentiment, I think. All right. And I actually really like the addition of the sentiment, so I'm glad I did it. And we are going to call that good once I make sure it's nice and straight here. There we go. All right, friends. Well, thanks for staying late with me a little bit. But there is our fun rainbow love card. I'm gonna get the camera flipped around real quick and let you guys go, because I know we went over a bit. Switch to me. All right, well, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for staying a little bit of extra time while we got this card all finished up. Um, I will get this photograph soon and it will be on my Instagram account. So you can check it out there later. Um, and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Uh, congratulations to Pam for winning the gift card today. And we should have a normal live schedule this week. So Heather should be live on Facebook on Thursday at 12 p.m. Central. So all right, friends, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, one last question. Audrey's asking me, what did I use to press on my Misty? Uh, it's just a little press it tool. I got the one from Tailored Expressions. There's a lot of different versions out there. Kind of looks like a dry erase, um, like a dry erase eraser, or whatever those markers are called. Um, so there's lots of different options out there. It just um, makes my stamping a little bit more even. All right, friends, thanks for joining me. I'm going to let you go. Have a great rest of your Tuesday.